Hello there. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at HTTP, uh, doing some simple requests. Uh, we'll see if we get around to posting. I might just do get and delete today, but depending on how much time I have, we'll see if we can get around to doing, um, at the very least, um, get I think is very important, mostly because uh, we want to make sure that if you are using uh, a website as a resource, let's say, for example, you're doing the Twitter lab extension, you definitely need to know how to use HTTP to get responses from a server. Setting up a server, definitely beyond the scope of this course, but at the very least, you want to make sure that you have the knowledge you need to retrieve any information from the internet. So without further ado, uh, we are going to set up our pubspec.yaml to add only one dependency, which is HTTP. HTTP. Not too tricky. Pub get. And done. Now, over in main, we are going to, um, yeah, give me those dependencies. Thank you. Um, we're going to clear out most of this. Uh, I think we're going to end up with um, basically everything after the stateless widget gone. Get out of here. Boom. Uh, and we're just going to have my app remove all these comments. Um, we'll leave the app and the theme and our home is going to be a, another file that we'll build. So we'll leave this here. Uh, and this is our HTTP demo. Cool. Okay. Not much going on here. Just going to clear up some stuff, uh, and move on to the next thing we're going to do, which is we're going to, uh, uh, you know, looks quite familiar. Make some more to do's. It's always nice to have a list of stuff to do. So um, this class is going to look very similar to ones you've seen before. It's called to do. We're going to import nothing. We don't need anything. Um, so the to do's that I'm going to use for this are actually modeled off of a website. Uh, the website I'll show you here is called, whoop, pull it over, um, jsonplaceholder.typeacode.com. And essentially this website is meant to be a fake API for testing HTTP. So I'll be able to run commands on this website, mess with the data and so on, but it's not actually messing with the data because it's not a real website. So um, uh, the idea is that you can use fetch if you want to go and access stuff from here. Turns out there's a list of to-dos that we're gonna be playing with today, um, but we're gonna be just using really basic HTTP requests to go and get some of the data here. Uh, so the data on the website looks something like this. It's just each a bunch of items that have a user ID, uh, an ID, a title, which is just some Latin, uh, and whether or not it's been completed, just so that I have some data to play around with. And we're gonna try to access this website. Maybe we'll pull some stuff, delete some stuff and so on. So um, yeah, note it's all fake data. So you can test whatever the heck you want on it. There's some other resources here if you wanna play around with them. Um, and there's a whole guide if you wanna figure out how to do stuff. And so yeah, all HTTP methods are supported. You can use get, you can use post, you can use delete. Uh, we're probably going to do get, we're probably going to do delete. Whether or not we do post, we'll see how much time I have. But if there's time, why not? Um, and you can make up your own apparently, uh, but I haven't tried that. So let's, uh, you know, play with it at your own risk. Okay. Uh, so since we have to do objects, we're going to need to build them. So our to do objects have a ID that we saw. It was an integer. It has a um, user ID, also an integer. It has a string, which was the title. This is a little weird Latin. And there was uh, whether or not it was completed, which was true or false. Uh, constructor for this is the very basic. <laughs> this dot ID, this dot user ID, this dot title, this dot completed. The, um, uh, we're gonna want a to string. So we'll call it uh, to string. Nothing fancy here either. Return to do. Um, with the parameters inside. So we'll just do them one by one, ID, user ID, uh, title completed, just so we can print it out when we need to. Um, and so what we're gonna wanna do is um, we're going to make a, a var to do dot from map so that we can uh, take a map map and we're going to return a to do. Uh, actually, is this var? Uh, it can't be var. Uh, I can just get rid of this, I think. Uh, and so our to-do is going to have the ID be map of ID. 
the user ID is going to be map user ID in quotes. The title is going to be map of the title. And completed is going to be map of completed. Uh, now, I think the reason this is angry, uh, constructors can't return values. So um, this might be a case of needing to use a design pattern here called factory, I imagine will do this. Yeah, so uh, if you're unfamiliar with the factory design pattern, which is something that, is it giving me a little reminder of what this is? Nope, um, it's okay. Basically what's going on here is um, if I get a map that has all of the data I need to construct a to-do object, I want to be able to return a to-do obj uh, to object from that map. So hence to-do.fromMap. Uh, and a factory is basically the name of the design pattern where you can take one source and create objects, instances specifically, because we want to have actual to-do objects that we can look at. So that's everything for to-do, not too long of a piece of code. Uh, and most of the work we're going to do is going to be in our third file, which is going to be called to-do list. Uh, to-do list. Um, and so our to-do list is going to have to import some stuff. We're going to import material. We are going to import um, dart colon convert. Um, forgot why I need this, but maybe we'll see later. Um, and we're going to import HTTP as HTTP, just so that every time we use it, we can make it clear. Here's where we're using HTTP. Oh, and we probably should import to do. That would make sense. Okay, um, we're going to make a stateful widget. So ST, there it is, stateful. And we're going to call it to do list. It does all that coding for us. Very convenient. Uh, we are going to get rid of constant because we want a title for this this.title, which is going to be a final string. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> it's easy. <coughs> mm. Sorry about that. Okay, um, actually it doesn't need to be final, I don't think. But it doesn't matter. All right, um, this is gonna be the thing that actually shows up. We're gonna have the scaffold and, um, and we'll put some buttons in so we can play around with the HTTP stuff, but uh, to begin, we're going to need to make sure that we actually have a list of our to-dos. So we'll call it to-dos. It's going to be an empty list to begin. Um, but later we can populate this with the data from our HTTP source. So uh, we're also going to add in a method which overrides an existing one for widgets, uh, which is, or specifically states, uh, which is called void init state. No autocomplete for me? Sad. It's okay. So um, init state here is called any time that you try to initialize the widget. So this is going to run before you try to build anything. Uh, and it's going to run exactly once. And what we want to do here is we want to run the um, init state for the state. So the state class that comes with Flutter has a bunch of stuff it needs to do to set up everything. You want to make sure that still happens. But in addition to that, we are going to call a function called load to do's. And here's where we're going to load in all of our to-dos. And to do so, we're going to need a future function, uh, load to-dos. It's going to be asynchronous, because loading can take time. Uh, and we are going to have a response from our HTTP request. And here is our request, http.get. We're going to get something. Uh, and it's asking for a URL, um, a universal, um, I think a universal resource identifier, URL. Uh, and this is us needing to grab the website we want to go and uh, get a page from. So in this case, I want uri.parse, because I'm taking a, um, the, the address that I want to have is a string. I need to take that string and create, turn that into a URI. And the string in this case is going to be a copy of actually the website that I was just at, which is, uh, can I pull it up again? Where is it? Uh, over here. So I want... Um, what was it? To do's over here. So I grab this. There it is. And that is going to go right in here. Uh, is that right? HTTP. I don't know if HTTPS is necessary. We'll try with HTTPS, but if it gets mad at me, we'll remove the HTTPS. We'll see. 
Um, okay, so uh, I, queer, I use a get request to go get the data from this website, and if it works, then great. And the way that I know if it works, uh, this is something you would know if you've done networking before. Um, if you haven't, then any time that you try to access a website, uh, very often codes will come up. So some codes you're probably very familiar with are things like 404 page not found. Uh, and there's probably a bunch of other ones you can think of, um, 400 and so on. And each of these is a special code that uh, uniquely identifies what has happened when you tried to make the request. And in our case, we care if it worked. If it did anything else, then okay, no good. But assuming it worked, then we want to process the data. So if the response has a status code of 200. 200 is the HTTP OK. So this means that uh, you were able to make the request successfully. Then we have something we can work with. Um, we're going to wrap stuff in set state. Um, but before we do that, let's, I guess, write the code. So we're going to have our to do's uh, is going to start out as an empty list, just in case. And then we're going to decode our response to try to grab all of the data from there. So if you look at the website itself, you can see that everything in here whoop, um, is set up as a JSON. So we have a list, uh, you know, square bracket at the top, uh, square bracket at the bottom, and then each thing is surrounded in braces. So this is JSON data, and we're going to want to decode all of this into um, like the individual objects that are there. So what we want to do is, oops, sorry about that moving things around. Um, we are going to want to make a list of to-do items, uh, which is going to be JSON decode. And the source here is the body of the response. This is like the main data you actually got from your request. And for each um, item in the, uh, the decoding, we are going to add to our to-do list uh, dot add uh, to do dot from map of the item. So in here, we are getting back as our list of things here, these are going to all be different maps um, that have the data that we got from the website, but we don't want a map, we want an object so we can actually do stuff with it. So for each map that we got, which are the items um, that we've retrieved from this website, we're going to generate a to do and put that into our list of to do's. Okay, so um, assuming that all works, hopefully, <laughs> we are going to try to show it off. Uh, and hopefully that will do what we want it to do. So to show it off, we are going to need a scaffold because we don't have anything in our app right now. Uh, our scaffold is going to have an app bar. Um, the app bar is going to have app bar. It's going to have a title. The title is going to be the usual text widget dot title. Uh, oh, and I promise it's real. Um, we're going to have. I think we'll put some buttons in here later. For now, I just want to show everything off. So we'll actually just leave this for now. Uh, and we're going to have a body for our scaffold, which is going to be us making our list of to-dos. Create to-dos list. Uh, do I need a parentheses here? Yes. OK. Now let's write that code. Uh, I'm just going to give us a widget, because we need the widget to uh, put in for a body. I'm going to create to-dos list. OK, first off, if um, if our list of to-dos is still empty, that means we haven't processed the web page yet. We have to wait. Anytime we're waiting, good thing to just return a circular progress indicator. Just says, you know, we're loading something. Um, otherwise, we are going to return a list view builder. I'm going to make a um, bunch of items, which we now have something to, we can load in our to-dos. So from this list, we can use that to generate all of the items that are going to show up in our list. So, oop, oop, not what I want. There we go. Okay, um, my item builder is going to be a function that's going to generate the list for me. Um, it can generate each item of the list for me, I should say. Uh, so I have my context, I have the index for each item. Uh, the title, oh, hold up, um, uh, yeah, so now that I have that, I'm going to return a list tile, it's an element of the list, 
and that's going to have a title. And the title for this is going to be the um, to do's index number dot title. I promise it's real. So we're at this point, what we've got is we're trying to make a list. Each item of the list is a tile. And to generate each tile, we're going to take the index of that tile, um, the index number, so item number three, for example, and grab its title, and that's going to be the title for our tile. I guess we can add some other stuff. We'll put in the subtitle for it is, um, you know, to do's index um, user ID to string. Just so that's there. Um, we'll have um, leading. We'll have a checkbox. And this is going to be whether or not it's done. Uh, yeah. This will have value is to do's index dot completed, whether it's completed or not. Uh, does this have a must? Yeah, unchanged. When you change it, uh, we'll, we'll do nothing now. Or I suppose we can do something now. If you change the the check mark box next to the item, let's just have it where it modifies to do's um, completed. This is the value, so whether it's checked off or not. Um, now, I missed some set states in here. What should I have done? Um, ah, so my first set state should be this one. So once I um, once I've ensured that I've collected all of the data here, then I want to do set state right there. And once I have changed any of the um, completed values, I want to set state that too. Boom. So this way it will show up once it loads all of the data and it will change the box to indicate that I've checked off a box. So hopefully this all works. I guess we're going to find out. And then if it does, we have some more stuff we can do with regards to uh, trying to delete stuff. Maybe we can get in trying to add something. We'll find out. But uh, I need a to-do list for my main function. It's going to go over here. It's going to be called to-do list. Uh, and I have to import it as well. OK. Let's give this a go. Well, hopefully it works. Uh, I have to open up my device probably has a uh, last videos content, I imagine. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, we got through this pretty quickly. So I think we might have the opportunity to at least get delete done. And then in addition to delete, we can try to um, to post as well. It's the emulator taking some time. We'll see if I hopefully don't have to wipe the phone. That would be kind of annoying. It's a lot slower than it should be, though. I'm not quite sure why. Um, is my device manager? I mean, it looks like it's fine. It's just connecting really slowly. If it takes too long, I'll maybe pause the video and then see how long it takes to come back. Um, but ideally, it should not take this long. Alternatively, I could wipe the phone and build a new one. <laughs> it's not too hard to do that. It doesn't take too long. Um, it's also possible that because in the last video I had put on my Google account, maybe that's causing it to delay longer than it normally would. So, uh, you know what? I think I might actually do that. Just clear this phone and start a new one. Nothing on the old one I care that much about anyway. So, okay, bye-bye. Uh-oh out of here. Yes, I know. Let's uh, delete. Yep. Make a new one. Pixel 4 is fine. Uh, R will do. Maybe I should switch to S? It's hard to say. R should be fine, though. Uh, yep, want my pixel. Let's go.
Hmm, this is really taking a lot longer than it should. To be fair, this is a new phone, so maybe that'll take a little longer. There we go, okay. I guess we're getting, we're getting going. Mm hmm. And this is a this is a brand new one, so it might have some like setup stuff to do, but it shouldn't take too long. Okay, there we go. Looks like that's good enough. So now I should be able to run main dot dart. Let's go. I can, uh, I can hear the fans in my computer spinning rapidly as uh, as this is all going. Um, I do have a lot of tabs open, so hopefully that's not a big concern about what's happening. But uh, yeah, what we'll what we'll try to do after this is first start off by seeing if we can set up how to um, how to delete stuff that's there. Uh, and what I'm thinking of doing is something along the lines of. Um, um, basically having a button on our app bar that when you press it, it looks at all of the to-dos that are there. And if they are, um, if they're completed, then, then delete them. Ah, look at that. Uh, okay. Errors. I don't like errors. That's not great. Uh, valid value range is empty. Well, that's not good. Where's that from? I mean, it looks like it generated everything. I'm not quite sure why it would give me an error. Uh, valid value range is empty. Hmm. It's a weird error to run into. This is index, title. Hard to really say what's happening there, but I mean, it looks like it's working, so. Uh, and yeah, and so this is the um, this is the list of uh, all the to dos that are on the website. Um, just to to zoom in a little bit here, um, you can see the first one says uh, what delectus autem something like that. Uh, and if I go back to my little list here and go to the top, hey look there it is. Um, now some of these are complete, some of these are not. So let's see if we can set up a request so that we can delete anything that's been checked off. Uh, that shouldn't take too long to do, and then we can try doing, um, maybe I'll leave the post for class, and then, uh, I mean, I think that most of the stuff you need to get set up doesn't really take too long. Um, the delete and post uh, end up not being too different in the formatting. Um, it's essentially just uh, submitting a different kind of request, and you can always look up the uh, documentation if you want to try other things, but for now, let's just go and do delete, and then we can maybe call it a day, huh? Um, now, in my app bar, I want an action, uh, which is going to be an icon button. Uh, and let's space this all out nicely. Space, space. The icon for this is going to be um, an icon, whoop, icon, icons.delete. So we're gonna delete stuff. When we press the button, then we are going to generate a new list of to-dos, new to-dos, uh, and our goal here is to only include the stuff that hasn't been done yet. So for each um, to-do that we already have, um, if uh, it's not done, to-do.completed, then we will add it to new to-dos add to do. Uh, completed is a guarantee it has a value. And then otherwise, we're going to do an HTTP request and we're going to do delete. Um, and we have to do a URI.parse. And we're going to put in the, do I still have the link from before? No, it's been replaced. So okay, we're just going to go back to the website. Oops. Just opened up the website in a separate thing and grabbed it. Um, but now, um, 
I'm, I don't want to delete the whole page. That's not really what I'm looking for. What I want to do is go to this page and from here, find the item that has the ID number to do dot ID. Um, remember that the, um, the ID here is unique identifier for the, um, the semicolon at the end here, uh, is a unique identifier for each item in the list. So I guess pulling it up again, just so you can see, um, the user ID can be the same. It might be like this one person seems to put all these values in. The IDs themselves are all unique. One, two, three, four, and so on. So from here, uh, what I want to do is I want to um, delete anything with unique ID that matches my completed task. And then it should wipe them all away and my home screen should not have them on there anymore. Um, I guess I don't wanna call this Flutter home screen, right? It should have the, the proper name. Uh, I'll call it um, HTTP fake data, you know. Um, <clears throat> so let's run that again. Oh, so what I think it was is, um, I think I may have made a mistake here in that, um, so this error popped up because it tried to load the data before it was ready, which means I might be able to fix that with a future builder somewhere. Uh, I think I might have a builder here. I think it's this one. Um, I don't know if this can become a future builder though, so I might not be able to. Um, so the reason that this is doing what it's doing is because, and, you, and this error keeps popping up and you see the screen went red for a second, which is not really perfect, um, is that when I'm trying to, um, to show the, um, the results that are there, it tries to show everything before it's actually finished, pro like fetching all the data from the internet, which kind of sucks. So I wonder if I can actually try to fix that as one of the last things. Um, maybe just to make sure that the delete for works, we'll, we'll try that first. So let's delete Delectus Aut Autumn. It looks like the checkbox is working okay. Uh, pitch it. Did that not work? Let's see. Uh, the button's just not doing anything. Well, that's not good. Uh, what did I miss? Oh, I bet there's a set state that I missed. Is that right? Yes, I missed two things actually. First, I need to um, set my new list of to-dos to be the new ones and not the old ones. <clears throat> and I need this to be in set state so that I actually update my screen. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not gonna see anything happen because why would I? Run. And let's try that again. So, delete this autumn, delete. And look at that. Now all of the um, all of the items uh, that remain are all ones that are incomplete. And if I want to say get rid of just the first one, I can click on it and say get out of here. And now I've done this thing to do, and I've done this to do, and so on and so forth. So good stuff. Now I still want to get rid of that error because that error is kind of annoying. Um, and I think that all I have to do really is make sure that I have um, asynchronicity in the right spot. And I believe that I can do so. I just have to make sure I'm doing it in the right place. And I think that's um, So it's it's over here, I believe, is the uh, the part where this is a problem. Now, my issue is this builder. Um, I don't think defaults to being asynchronous, which is unfortunate. Now, when I create my to-do list in the build here, hmm. Interesting, interesting. Um, see, because what I want is for... Here, you know what I'll do actually? Is I'll have an if here, and I'll do an if to do's is empty, then it will still load. And if it's not empty, then I'll do the other thing. So if um, to do's dot length is zero, means no elements yet then return circular product indicator. Let's try that. Just to see if it stops giving me errors. Okay, that was really hideous <laughs> because it made a circular product um, progress indicator for, um... oh yeah, so, so it should do it over here, right? It just wasn't for some reason. 
wait a sec, yeah, because this, this shouldn't be necessary, right? Like, it should, um, it should be returning that over here. So I think what, what I think is happening is I think that this is failing when it shouldn't. So we wanna, maybe I'll try doing this instead. I'll go here and replace this with this and get rid of this. Let's see if that fixes it. Um, go. See, there we go. Now I, you only saw it probably for a, a, like a fraction of a second. Let me, let me do it again and bigger. So you can see for a fraction of a second, the circular progress thing is loading there. And then um, it, um, it goes away and actually shows a thing it has no errors. And that's because I think the line here where I had comparing to do's to empty list um, for some reason was just like not actually making the equivalency, which is kind of weird, but I guess that's what happened. Um, okay, so um, I don't want to keep this video for too long, so I think I'm going to like call it here, but in class, um, since this didn't take me too long, I'm going to see if I can put together doing some, um, some posts, so putting stuff up, because that's also something that's somewhat useful to do. Uh, and so probably keep a lookout on GitHub for the code that I'll do in class, which will include everything we've done in this exercise, as well as um, I'll put in, I think I'll put in like a floating uh, action button. And then when I press it, it will, uh, maybe we'll have it go to a new page. And then when it, or for now we'll have it, we'll see, I guess how much time we have, but I'll try to have it put data up um, so that it should show up. And then if we have more time than that, then I'll have it actually go to a new page. And on a new page, we can like fill in um, a, a whole to-do object and then push that instead. So we'll see how much time we have to do that kind of thing. But I feel like we should have it, especially since last class we like ran out of time. So, okay, uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this is helpful for getting your HTTP stuff set up. And I will see you in class. Bye-bye.